Hello, I'm Sangkyo Kim from Seoul National University. Today, I will talk about acceleration of number theoretic transformations for bootstrappable homomorphic encryption on GPUs. Fundamental question about such a topic is number theoretic transform, homomorphic encryption, does it matter? About this question, I can say yes. Homework encryption is a promising crypto system which enables computation on encrypted messages. But enormous computational overhead is an obstacle to practical use of homework encryption. To mitigate such overhead, typical works of HE use Chinese remainder theorem CRT and number theoretic transform entity. Among the two, we'll focus on entity. Then the following question is that. Does entity in HG matter? Yes, here is a ratio of entity and its inverse transform I entity in the time of multiplication between ciphertexts of HE. Entity and I entity takes 50.4% of the time when running with open source software Microsoft Sale. And reported value in prior work says 34% of the time is used for entity and I entity. Okay, then why GPUs? Is there any benefits? Yes, entity consists of multiply operations that can be operated in parallel. GPU is eligible for computation which has such a huge parallelism. So how do we accelerate it? Because entity is a specialized form of discrete train transform, there are many commonly applicable optimizations to entity and DFT. But as many as the have in common, there are also many differences. For example, basic computation of entity is modular multiplication instead of floating point multiplication of DFT. So, comprehensive comparison of the characteristics of DFT and entity is good starting point of acceleration of entity. Many prior works do acceleration of entity on GPUs, but they wreck a comprehensive analysis of differences between DFT and entity, or consider only small HC parameters that is not bootstrappable. Without bootstrappable parameters, HE have tight constraints in the number of arithmetic operations that can be performed without decryption. In our work, we analyze the differences between DFT and NTT and do study on the design space of the commonly applicable optimizations on modern GPUs. Before explaining about NTT, we have to know about HE. HE is crypto system that enables computation on encrypted messages. Here is a simple example. Let's perform multiplication of 24 and 15 in ciphertext space. Encryption step is simplified by module operation with the key values. So 24 and 15 are converted into pairs corresponding to ciphertext by encryption step and conduct element-wise multiplication by the module operation over the result of prior multiplication, a pair of number 3 and 8 can be obtained. If the same module operation is also applied to 360, which is the result of the multiplication between 24 and 15, it is equally calculated as 3 and 8. This means that message 360 can be obtained when the pair 3 and 8 is decrypted. And the computation is performed with only the encrypted messages. But real HE is not that simple. Cybertext of HE is represented as polynomials whose coefficients are represented as big integers. Computation over such a big integer is inefficient. Chinese remainder theorem allows computational overhead of manipulating big integers to be avoided. 
CRT is transformation of representation of a number using a set of co-primes. After CRT, the number is expressed as a set of residues through the modal operation with the numbers in the set of co-primes. It may be confusing because there is a mode operation same as the previous example. But the modal operation here is a process of changing the representation of numbers as residues with co-primes and is different from the previous modal operation for encryption. By CRT, the given numbers 17 and 37 are converted like this. The important point of CRT conversion is that the result of multiplication between residues and the result of taking CRT as 629, which is the result of multiplication between the numbers before conversion, are the same. And it is possible to obtain 629 from the result of multiplication between residues through the inverse CRT process. Computation using CRT over such a small number like 17 and 37 is unnecessary. But the same process over big integer allows us to avoid the inefficient computation of manipulating big integers. So by CRT, polynomials in ciphertext are converted as multiple polynomials whose coefficients are the residues of each coefficient of original ciphertext divided by the numbers in set of co-prime integers. In this case, the numbers in co-prime set are denoted as P sub 1 to P sub NP. NP means number of primes. Well-known benefit of such a conversion is that each ciphertext that per CRT is independent. So, computation can be performed in parallel. Computational overhead of manipulating big integer can be solved by CRT. But complex computation such as ciphertext multiplication is still a problem. Even worse, bootstrapable condition depends the computational overhead of multiplication. Multiplication in ciphertext is tens of thousands of times slower than multiplication in message state. Multiplication between polynomials is computed as convolution whose compute complexity is O n to the 2. Entity can reduce such a compute complexity by converting convolution as element-wise multiplication with additional entity and inverse of entity. Since entity has a time complexity of O n log n, the complexity of entire convolution process is reduced to O n log n. Okay, then what is entity? As said before, entity is a specialized form of DFT for finite field of integer. Then what is difference between DFT and entity? First, target of each transformation is differ. DFT target sequence of real numbers and entity target sequence of integers in finite field. We consider sequence as vector and the length of the vector is marked above the vector. Since entity is applied after CRT, the sequences of entity is expressed in multiple vectors. And for the same comparison, the situation in which DFT is performed for multiple sequences is set. Second, there is difference in selection of primitive nth root of unity. DFT uses e to the minus 2 pi j over n as primitive nth root of unity. On the other hand, entity uses psi which satisfy psi to the n equivalent with 1 on mod p. p is prime that satisfy p equal k times n plus 1 for a given n. Psi satisfying this condition for a given prime and n is written as psi sub n comma p in the paper. The root of unity of DFT is set by length of sequence. It can be shared among multiple conversion of different sequences. 
However, the root of unity of entity is set by n and moduli p. So, sequences converted using different moduli need different root of unity. This difference in primitive n's root of unity also make differ in tweed factors. Tweed factors are factors which are multiplied to elements of sequences to compute DFT or NTT. Tweed factors are generated from primitive n's root of unity. The huge difference in generation step of tweed factors between NTT and DFT is that NTT needed additional module operation. Because such a module operation is expensive, pre-computation of tweed factors is effective. With different primitive n's root of unity, the pre-computed tables must also be different. So, entity needs pre-computed table with size n times k. Due to DFT uses single primitive n's root of unity for all sequences with length n, DFT only needs pre-computed table with size n. Fourth, basic computation is different. Instead of floating point computations of DFT, entity's basic computation is modular multiplication, which is expensive. So, entity needs an alternative computational method to mitigate such a computational overhead of modular operation. Schupp's modular multiplication is one of such an alternative computational method. Schupp's method needs additional pre-computed value, which is denoted with a bar over W in the algorithm. Since each tweed factor requires different W bar value, an additional pre-computed table of size n times k is required for entity. In sum, the total size of pre-computed table of entity is 2k times larger than that of DFT. So, how will optimization be applied to NTT? First, let's talk about the commonly applicable optimizations. To fully utilize GPU, we applied batching multiple NTT. We find out that DRM bandwidth is a performance bottleneck of NTT with enough large batch size. Increasing radix using registers can mitigate such a bottleneck by reducing the number of DRM access. When performing 16-point NTT with Redix 2 entity kernel, there are total 4 times of input sequence read from DRM. If we perform the same size of NTT with higher Redix such as Redix 4, only 2 DRM access is needed. The graph below shows performance of NTT with increasing Redix using registers. Until Redix 16, as the Redix of entity increased, the performance also improved. In the Redix 32 and the Redix 64, even though the DRM access is reduced, the performance deteriorated. This is due to the drop in occupancy and utilization. In Redix 128, it can be seen that DRAM access increases because additional data load from DRAM is occurred due to register spill. Problems such as occupancy drop and register spill in the previous increasing Redix using registers are all caused by too many register users per thread. Shared memory implementation can solve the previous problems by allowing larger radix with the small amount of registers used for input data. Here is an example of shared memory implementation for 16-point entity. One thread performs radix 4 entity. So each register uses for input data is same as radix 4 in increasing radix using registers. It then stores each result of Redix 4 NTT on shared memory SMAP and synchronize. Instead of additional DRAM access in Redix 4 case of increasing Redix using registers, we can load operand data from SMAP and perform the next Redix 4 NTT. 
So the amount of registers used for input data is the same as Regis 4, but Regis 16 can be performed. In shared memory implementation, there is obvious trade-off between register usage and the number of long-level synchronization. The amount of register usage per thread changes according to the per thread entity size, which is the regex of entity that one thread executes at a time. While performing 16-point entity with regex 4, the number of needed synchronization is only once. But with 2-point per thread entity, we need 4 times of execution of 2-point entity in each thread. So the total number of synchronization is 3 times. Please refer to the paper for changes in entity performance according to various per-thread entity size. Since entity's pre computed table has a larger size than DFTs, it is necessary to reduce their size in order to solve the bottleneck in data bandwidth. However, if there is an additional module operation due to this, the performance is rather degraded. So we suggest on-the-fly twiddling OT technique with associated blow to prevent an additional module operation. Without associated blow, to compute W times X with W sub 1 and W sub 2, which are part of W, two times of additional module operations are needed. Using associated blow, Instead of module operation, only one additional SHUPS modular multiplication is needed. The overhead given by OT varies depending on how many units the tweeted factor is factorized. In case of base 2, which only leaves tweeted factors to the power of 2, to compute W to the n minus 1, rogue n times of computations are needed. Because such a huge number of additional computation is huge overhead, we use base 1024 instead. Base 1024 has two tables, base table and additional table as shown in below. Using such a table set to compute w to the n minus 1, twice of computations are needed. In this setting, the number of computations is always 2 for any case. But it is correct that this type of table partitioning requires larger amount of pre-computed tables compared to the base 2 case. But both cases are sufficiently smaller than the size of original table, so this point can be ignored. The application of OT was done only at the rear stages because the amount of usage of trade factors is biased backwards. Here is summary. Our experiments are performed on NVIDIA Titan V GPU with CUDA 10.0 version. SMM in label of graph means shared memory implementation and 2.8 point means per thread entity size. OT is only applied on last two stages. Baseline is batch Redix 2 implementation. By applying commonly applicable methods, we achieve 4.3 times performance improvement. And OT gives 8.1% additional speed up. Overall, we improve the performance by 4.7 times. Please refer to the paper for the result of application for various other parameters. This is end of my presentation. Thank you for listening.